What's up guys, Joe here with Tradger Farms. If you are new to the channel, welcome. Uh, we do a bunch of different stuff, mainly uh, habitat improvement on uh, our farm, following Jeff Sturgis's uh, plan from Whitetail Habitat Solutions. Really taking you guys um, through step by step everything we're doing in the current time. A lot of our videos won't um, have you know, every step of the process in one video because we're trying to get it out to you guys as soon as possible. That way you can kind of follow along and then eventually get to the, the uh, results when they happen. But today we're here to talk about trail cameras. There's a, a ton of companies out. They range, range in prices and quality and all sorts of stuff. There's mixed reviews on every company. And I think this is probably the uh, fourth or fifth video that we've done on trail cameras alone. We started out with Moultrie and kind of moved to Stealth Cam and tried different versions of their cameras over the last, you know, really three, four, five years, but we've only had the farm for, um, I think this is going into our third year now. So when we initially started, we had a lot of difficulties with the Moultrie. Um, we would be buying these expensive lithium batteries. We'd be running non-cell cams and cell cams. We'd have some sensor issues. Um, you know, we have a couple maybe of the really old ones that are hanging on. I think maybe one, possibly two cameras, but when they die, you know, I really won't be spending any more money on those. Um, and it was kind of funny. We actually had a family member buy a new cellular one and it worked flawlessly for six months. Loved it. And then all of a sudden, right after those batteries die, which it did last a while, I mean, I'd say five, five, maybe six months. I mean, it was solid. Um, wouldn't start again right after we swapped the batteries out. Did everything. I mean, I feel like half an expert. Hard resets, swapping cards, make sure they're compatible, um, you know, walking through with their customer service. And anyway, so I was completely done with that. It is, in my opinion, not what cameras are, are going to stop working, but it's just a matter of time. All of their cameras, it just, I was fed up and done with those, and I don't recommend you purchase any, even if you've had one that worked in the past. Stealth Cam um, was okay. We had some cameras that worked fairly well, a few more blanks. They were a little bit more prone to sensor issues, and what I mean by that is essentially, um, you know, it could be a false trigger, but most of the time when it's just every minute on the minute taking a picture and just draining the batteries after a week, that's a sensor issue. There's nothing actually triggering it. You can move the camera into multiple different areas and check, but if it continually does that no matter what, um, that's most likely the, the problem they said. So we sent all those cameras back. Um, we got new ones in. I've kept one 4K. Uh, other than that, I mean, you can give them to your friends. You can sell them on Facebook Marketplace. We did a little bit of everything, if you will but also not really done with those. Now, before that, now, I really wanted to try Cuddyback, but I always saw mixed reviews. I thought what Cuddyback was telling us, um, and I'm not sponsored in any form or fashion, but, you know, the ability to transfer everything to one camera and either A, be able to take the SD card from one camera and have all the pictures from the surrounding cameras on that card, or B, make one camera a cell camera and still have all those pictures go to that cell camera and then those pictures go to your phone. That's how that works. You have both of those options. If you buy a cell camera, it has to have a cell plan and go that route. If you buy what they call, I think it was a, a home or something like that, all the remote cameras send to this home. Um, I don't even think it takes pictures actually. It's just like a base, if you will, and you can pull the card and it doesn't send the picture to your phone, but you can get all of the remote camera pictures on that one card and go get it from your campsite or whatever. So you still don't need to walk around the farm. But because of those mixed reviews, all sorts of stuff, I was too skittish to jump into that platform because I knew if I started with that, I was probably gonna have to maintain the Cuddy system and, and only buy those cameras. But after a year um, or so, at the end of last year, I got two of them and I tried them out and they worked fairly well. My biggest issue was um, battery life. And I put in some remaining, I think, Duracell batteries that I had. And they only lasted like 30 to 40 days. And I finally called them up and said, you know, listen, so far they were, they were working great, but if that's the battery life on decent or, or great, I guess, batteries, I would say, you know, that's not gonna work. I'm not running back there every 30 or 40 days to change these cameras, even if it's a cell camera, that's ridiculous. Um, but after speaking with a customer service rep, they said that I should be trying Rayovac batteries. And I didn't know if that was just some suggestion or, um, or something that, you know, was really gonna make a difference. And so uh, that was the end of pretty, pretty much shed season. I got them towards the end of the year and then I didn't use them again until, you know, uh, last summer. 
So that would have been two years ago. And then last summer I had, I've been running um, six or seven cameras, uh, six I believe, throughout all this year. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today with you guys. <clears throat> so um, running those cameras, I want to talk about basically a list of pros and, and a few cons that I've come across so you guys can make um, the informed decision. But uh, on the list of pros, um, besides customer service, um, I'm rarely on hold uh, very often. They've always been very helpful. Some of the other companies aren't, aren't even like listing a phone number. I mean, it's a drag to get them on the line, but on hold personally, 45 minutes, hour plus, I mean, just ridiculous. Um, so I've been very happy with that as far as cutting back goes. The cameras, they got a range of cameras. I mean, there's J series, G series, you got different flashes. I like to go with that black flash because I just don't want any of that red light showing. I want to be as least, um, or as, you know, least intrusive as possible. And um, so I've been using multiple G series and some J series because they're a little bit cheaper, but also can be black flash. Uh, I believe the flash doesn't quite go as far, but we'll get into that. Uh, but that's that, those are great options. I got a couple notes here. So uh, batteries, the batteries, guys, these Rayovac batteries, this is, this is my first year using these, okay? Looks like this. This is a 12 pack, all right? Um, there's 12 batteries in here. You can buy this on Amazon as of today for $11.90, less than $1 uh, a battery. And they're high energy, um, but they're cheap. And I thought that was great. You see those a little better now? They're high energy uh, rated, but that did not boost up the price at all. They're still very cheap. I mean, I remember spending hundreds of dollars on the AA lithium batteries and uh, was shocked. And I thought, man, I'm really kind of doubtful that these are going to work well. Uh, lo and behold, though, they worked great. Even through the cold weather here in Michigan, I was so surprised. I spent not only less on batteries, um, but I got more batteries. Um, and part of that is because I was using these external battery packs. I bought at least three or four of the 12 battery pack external. So I have four in the camera, 12 in this external, and it is kind of hefty, but if you're attaching these to a tree and you're putting them high enough, who cares? Uh, you put them once, and I'm gonna put something up on the, on the screen for you here. <clears throat> and this is a report that you can get either multiple times a day, once a day, kind of whatever you want. You can set it to come from your cameras and get sent to you as far as um, you know the signal of each camera, if you have a camera name or number attached to it, where it is in the battery life, how many images um, it's taken. Now, <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie. The report essentially though, I thought is okay. And the reason I think it's just okay is because for example, when you see battery there, you know, you, you see, when you see EXT under that column, that's external. So if it just says low or okay, like on the very bottom, it says low for that camera, that's just the camera's batteries. If it says EXT, it's an external battery pack that you have. Um, and in my case, since it was a dual, uh, dual slot, meaning six in each slot, external battery pack. If it says external one, okay, it means you're only on the first slot of batteries and it's not going to switch on to the second until that first one runs out. So if it says EXT one, okay, you're still good. If it says EXT two, external two, okay, then you're on that second sleeve of batteries and it's okay. And once that moves to low, um, it will go external one low and then it'll go to external two and then external two low and eventually it will fall off the system. Just recently, that uh, sixth camera there uh, had fallen off the system. And part of the reason why I said the report is okay is because next to that you see battery days. And the days, of course, shows you how many days that those batteries have been run. However, when it gets low, like on that last one, number six, it will often keep resetting. So I think after 40 days on just camera batteries, the four batteries, so $4 worth of batteries, it started to reset the number. And so I lost track of how many days. Now I did go end up uh, counting for you guys how many days I got out of it, which was 76. So out of the difference between the Duracell and four batteries in a camera and the Rayovac, same thing in the winter time, cheaper batteries, I got almost double um, the amount of days with these batteries. So I was shocked to, to tell you the truth and uh, pleased at the same time. So. Um, that is again just the camera and this camera was not getting lit up with photos This was not over that 76 day period. It did not get thousands of photos um, I think you can see here. It's actually only saying 67 or so. I do think that was reset 
Um, and that's another thing that I wanted to mention on the report, the SD images. I don't think these numbers are completely accurate. This top camera is the home camera, so all of the pictures are being sent to the home camera. I tried to pull cards a couple of times and see you know, how accurate it was, and I just wasn't getting the same readout. So I don't know truly how those are calculated, um, but at the same time, I get a gist. You know, Over the um, six months or so that these other cameras that you see at external one and external two okay they're not even low yet on external two and they've been running uh flat out 246 days plus um so very impressive i think you could easily get a year's worth on those dual uh battery packs i do think next year i might go to the single um six batteries just to make it a little bit smaller um but realistically i mean that that's great news so depending on how you guys want to run your cameras or how long you can run just the four batteries in the camera. You can run one external battery pack uh, in the uh, on the outside of the camera and get you know probably I would say you know six months or so worth or close to that. And then if you run the the, the two external in the one pack, two slots, twelve batteries, um, that'll probably give you a year or pretty close to a year, uh, which is super impressive. If you guys want to see what bucks are still living in the area, maybe you're wondering what turkeys are running through. And I'll basically bring my cameras back for one or two months, get them all upgraded. Um, and that's another thing we'll talk about here in a second, but just kind of clean them up. Uh, so the long battery life, we touched on that. Multiple attachments, guys. So obviously I mentioned the two different external battery packs. You also have a solar panel, which I haven't tried, but I have heard decent things about to kind of keep those going and, um, and be able to kind of self recharge, which is awesome. And I think I'm almost positive you can actually use the solar panel with the external battery pack and it's just like a revolving door of energy. I don't know if you would literally ever run out, ever run out of, of electricity or juice if you put it in the right location. Um, after that, phone capability. So obviously I get the, the pictures sent to my phone, I get this report, I only have it set to one report a day so I can check the signals. Um, distance wise, if you guys are running about, wondering about that, I really don't go much more than a quarter mile between cameras, um, typically only a few hundred yards, and that depends on woods and field. You know, unless you're owning hundreds and hundreds of acres, I don't think you'd run into an issue, or if it's super dense woods or you have a lot of hills, um, but theoretically, you're gonna have cameras periodically around the farm anyway, so I just didn't see it as an issue. Six cameras on our 70 acres, um, just these cutties anyway. Um, you can see my signals are in 50, 60, 80, uh, whatever range. I mean, plenty. I have pictures coming through when these were down into the 20s and even below 20 as far as the signal goes um, from time to time as well. So should not be a huge issue on that. Um, but even though they don't have an app on this last update that they did, you just go onto their website. You can do it on your phone, go on the website, you can do it on a computer. And so let's say I was gonna go work on food plots, I didn't want a, a picture every time I drove by on the ATV. You could set it to a one hour delay or something like that, and then when you leave, just change it back. Uh, it was not a big deal not to have an app. You just log in on the on the phone, to really, that takes an extra five seconds. So, um, so that's great. They added that just a year or two ago, and um, I believe the beginning of last year. And I've been loving that because that was something they needed to do to keep up with these other companies. And then um, tracking the signal and the battery and things like that, I just showed you on the report. That's another uh, nice pro. Okay, on to some of the cons to be as realistic as possible with you guys. Photo quality. It's not stellar, but the photo quality is worse when it goes to the cellular uh, device. So if it comes to your phone, it's always going to be worse. You can still pull the SD card from the camera and get nice 20 megapixel or so uh, images, which is great. So yes, you might only be going by your cameras a couple of times, depending on how many stands you have through the hunting season. If you need those better images, you can pull them. I've rarely had an occasion where I get a picture and it's not the angle of the deer, but it just due to image quality, what I'm wondering about the rack. Typically, in you know, the growing season, August, September, where I'm really trying to count points or see what deer is what uh, from the previous year. Other than that, I haven't really had an issue. They're just not stellar quality. I'll try and put some examples up here for you as well. Um, but it w wasn't the greatest. It would be nice eventually if we could get a little better photo sent to our phone. Uh, the price of the cameras, excuse me, Really, these are mostly in the medium to high range. There are definitely more expensive out, 
uh, cameras out there and there's definitely cheaper being you know some of your Moultrie and and some of stealth cams most cameras have uh, a lower price point muddy things like that wild game but on average I would say medium uh, these kind of fall in that medium range two three hundred dollars you can easily look at spending in their in their normal cameras there are some cheaper they have um, the non-cellular regular like 20 megapixel just throw and go camera. I see that on Camo, Camo Fire and some other websites all the time for like $90. And I'll tell you, the first reason why I went to this Cuddyback camera is if you went back and saw one of my other trail cam videos is because my good friend had a old five, six, seven year old uh, non-cell Cuddyback camera. That thing went through the whole season with just AA lithium batteries, worked flawlessly to my knowledge, but it had no um, you know, false triggers for the most part or anything like that. And I said, you gotta be kidding me. This old camera's working that good, I have to at least try the new ones. And that's what pushed me over the edge to go ahead and try these uh, newer Cuddybacks. Um, you can also go to guidefitter.com. This is if you're a veteran, a first responder, if you work in the outdoor industry. I mean, these companies want you to order off their site, right? Because they wanna show the businesses on their site that they're selling through them. I'm sure they're getting some kind of cut. So if you're in anything remotely close, you might as well log on, go to guidefitter.com and see if you qualify and you can get some of these discounts. I'm typically getting like 25 to 30 or so percent off of these cuttybacks, which is great. If you're gonna be buying five, six, seven, eight, however many cameras, um, you know, the money really starts to add up in savings. So please check that out if um, you think you can fall into one of those categories. And then lastly, really the flash, it kind of goes in with the, um, with the photo quality, but with the black flash at least, I'm sure it might be a little better if you do use infrared or something like that, but it was okay. Again, some of these examples here, um, you know, it never really was a, oh, I couldn't tell at all what kind of deer it was, but sometimes you just would want it to be a little more clear. You're showing your buddies, whatever it's gonna be. Again, okay, but not unbearable. So. Going forward, there's a couple other things that I want to do with these that um, I think are really going to limit some of these other um, issues or just take them up to the to the highest level in my mind. One is using a, a defogger and that is essentially so if there's morning dew, which again still rarely happened I would say, but even on the other older cameras, uh, you know, a Moultrie and a stealth cam that I have, putting a little of this like, I believe you wipe it on, it's a defogger, um, will really help and let that uh, moisture run off of the lens. Um, so when I bring them in to update them this spring, uh, I'm going to put some of that on and that'll really help with any um, small foggy uh, type pictures and issues that you run into. And then lastly, uh, also trying out the solar panel and maybe a six battery type external pack for the cameras just because uh, it's a tad cheaper to do that and I, I really don't think that um, the 12 battery external pack is truly necessary unless you want to leave these things sit out all year long. Again, with these Rayovac batteries, even in the Michigan cold, um, I did not run into any issues. So that is all that I had um, on the Cuddybacks. I've been pleased. I'm going to buy more. I do think that maybe for some public land or just some other spots where I don't want to run as many cameras, I'm going to try, I believe it's the Reveal or Tacticam Reveal, something to that uh, nature. I know you guys probably know what I'm talking about. Um, pretty good price point on those. A lot of guys are having very good luck, very little trouble running them. They have an app for the phone. Um, and I think when it comes to pricing for the cellular plan, I think personally when I crunch numbers, if I'm understanding it all correctly, on the Cuddyback, if you are going to be running three to four or more cameras, and you wanna be on one of their plans because the plan is good for all of the cameras, then I would go the Cuddyback route. If you're gonna have multiple, either far locations spread out, or maybe on your farm you're only running one to two cameras, maybe three, then you can try that reveal camera, um, and when you purchase uh, their plans, it'll end up being possibly a tad cheaper if you're not gonna get into the um, you know, four plus uh, cameras. But being able to run 16 or however many cameras on the Cuddyback system, pay for one plan to cover that, even unlimited. I think at the most you're paying is 40 bucks a month to get unlimited on 16 cameras. You really can't beat that. So it depends on the farm and, and what you're doing with all these cameras. But when I do try these uh, reveals on a couple of other permission farms and so on, I'll keep you guys posted. That's the only other, as far as right now, the uh, camera that I'm gonna try. Uh, but I hope this helped you guys, give you an informed um, you know, information on 
making those decisions going forward if Cuddyback's going to be a brand that you want to try. I think uh, it's been great for me, going to keep using them. And if anything else comes to mind, I'll let you know. If you guys have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them and uh, check them out. I'm, uh, again, not sponsored or anything like that. I just think that we all have a heck of a time trying to find trail cameras that work and save us on shipping and spending time with customer service. So uh, I think you'll have luck with these. We will see you guys next time.